Uh, well, I'd like to thank you for inviting me here today and uh, wonderful presentations. Uh, Susan, I'm sorry I caught the only the end of your presentation, but I was really captivated by uh, what's going on in your recognizing in local government. Folks, this isn't only state government where we have the problem. It's happening in local governments in school districts, in counties, in cities, um, and uh, each level of government is susceptible to the corruption that uh, the human condition brings. And uh, it's our job to be ever vigilant uh, in order to make certain that our government is accountable to the people uh, rather than the people being accountable to the government. And that requires us to be engaged. And that's why uh, we have to be at the caucuses on the 4th of February. Now, how many people know um, how much the Democrats, before we go into that, you don't, there is not a better legislat legislator in the Minnesota House than Representative Lomer back here. She is, she just does an awesome job representing conservative values and her convictions and standing by principle is something, if we could emulate that in 20 additional seats in the Minnesota House, we would have that conservative majority if we had 20 Kathy Lomer. So uh, I'm not into cloning tonight, but if you do something real close to that, um, with Kathy, that would be good. And that, that there, there are some people already getting up and running, and one of them is Kelly Fenton in Woodbury. And uh, I encourage you to check out her website. Uh, I had a chance to work with her uh, in a number of times. She's another one of those individuals who is very uh, committed, driven by principle, by conservative drive and conservative principle. And uh, check out her, uh, I looked up her website, fentonforhouse.com. Uh, check her out. She'll be one of the candidates that will be coming around to you at caucuses. Those are at that caucus location. Um, but how many people remember how much the Democrats raised taxes this last session? So the message is getting out, right? $2.1 billion plus another $300 million in fee increases. $450 for every man woman and child in the state of Minnesota was levied upon the state of Minnesota uh, by the current legislator, legislature. But now this is a completely different tact than the previous legislature took. And you'll remember we had the discussion when, when uh, Representative Lomer and I were in the majority and uh, we were having a discussion about, oh, remember, $34.4 billion and no more. Do you remember that discussion? I remember it well, and I see Kathy nodding her head too. Um, and we were struggling, even within our caucus, to make certain that we came up with a good budget target. Now the majority in the House, and the majority in the Senate, set that budget target uh, on their own as a caucus. They decide this is gonna be our budget target. And then the budgets are built uh, by the committee chairs and the members of each respective committee. Uh, each of those committee chairs then, the, the HHS committee and the education committee, which by the way now is 43% of our state budget, um, and 178,000 go to one guy, uh, is what I learned. <laughs> now we know why. But those committee chairs set those budget targets, and then all those budget targets then add up to the, the budget target that the leadership and the caucus eventually agree upon. And we were in that fight, and uh, the previous biennium had provided a 31.5 or a $32.5 uh, billion dollar budget, depending on how you measure a, a couple of things, uh, some federal government money, et cetera. Uh, and we were looking at, at spending the full $34.4 billion, the full amount of revenue that was coming in, and I think we made the argument we're, and we didn't. We didn't raise taxes. We spent everything that's coming in. But we had the opportunity to say, you know what? Let's spend the same amount we did the last two years, which would have been 32.5 or 31.5, um, and not raise the, the size, increase the size of government. The reason we weren't able to do that is we didn't have enough Kathy Lomers. If we had had those other 20 principled conservatives in the Minnesota House in 2011, that budget target would have been 32.5 or $31.5 billion. That's what makes a difference, and those are the kind of candidates 
we need to sweep in because I don't know about you folks, but I'm feeling some wind starting to pick up behind our back. It's not to the extent it was in 2010, but I, I, I start to hear the fan blades starting to turn uh, from Obamacare, and I think it's going to help us out. And we, we need to do everything we can to, uh, to flip that baby up into, from second gear up into fourth or fifth gear by the time we get to the election. Um, but those are the type of people that we need in order to, to, to bring the legislature, to bring the House, to act in a way that is principally conservative. Um, now, that whole budget process, if you remember, um, we ended up in a government shutdown. The governor and the, and the leg legislature didn't agree. He basically vetoed our, our budget bills. And uh, we ended up with a 34.4 plus another 1.5 billion of borrowing. So you remember that. We borrowed more money, uh, but we didn't raise taxes. And as a matter of fact, over that two year biennium, which just ended back in July, uh, we paid off all of the, uh, because we had uh, back to back to back to back budget forecast surpluses uh, throughout there because we were actually spending less than was agreed upon in the budget due to many of the reforms that we placed in there. Um, so that's that, that spending or that borrowed money actually was paid back. We actually paid back uh, most of the Democrats' $1.9 billion shift from the biennium before. Uh, but I'm getting down in the weeds. But so that wasn't the ideal scenario, but we were on a we were on a plane that had we arrived this last January with the Republicans still in control, we would have continued the same behavior. We would have continued to reform government uh, from within. We had only had to do it to the tune of $627 million this time instead of the $5.2 billion that we had to the time before. And we could have stayed on that course without further burning uh, the free people, somewhat free people, the, the people and businesses uh, in the state of Minnesota um, and, and putting the oppression of taxes and regulation uh, on them. Uh, we've been able to continue and, and, and we would have done it and it would have been a, a great budget. We wouldn't have had our neighbors uh, moving out of the state to places like Florida, Tennessee, Texas, South Dakota, and other places uh, that we see them going. By the way, those places don't have uh, personal income tax. Um, so instead what we had is the largest increase in spending in all funds spending in the history of the state of Minnesota, a 10% all funds increase in spending, a full $3 billion increase in spending in the state general fund, $3 billion increase in spending uh, fueled by that $2.1 billion in taxes and $300 million in fees, um, which of course raises cigarette tax. So now we're not a buck 23 a pack in Wisconsin's 252. Wisconsin's still 252, uh, we're 283 and uh, South Dakota's 44 cents. Um, those are the type of dynamics and things that we see happening. Um, and if we don't get people out to caucus, by the way, these Democrats, if they're, if they're in control, um, by the time we get to the end of November in the next election, they're in control again. They're not done, folks. There's a lot of, they have, their bill factory is cranking out faster than the Federal Reserve. It's, it, it's, it's amazing the, the things that they're bringing forward. They only got through a fraction of what they wanted to get through and uh, they have built this massive government that we have in the state of Minnesota over the generations that they have been in control here. Uh, we've had finally got to uh, a point in time where Republicans are starting to come forward and conservatives are starting to assert themselves in some years and being able to start to put the brakes on this thing. But they have built this massive government that we have um, uh, throughout those years, and they will continue to do it. Um, so, as you think about going to caucuses, and I wouldn't just go to caucus myself, I'd make sure your spouse goes, I'd make sure your neighbors go, I would take six, eight, ten people with you to that caucus, so we can have the largest turnout uh, uh, in our state's uh, history. That would be a great place to, to uh, uh, lead to as we go, but if we want to have change, in the legislature next year, that instead of raising taxes, three point uh, two point one billion dollars, because they could do it again, uh, they were coming after our booze. Remember that? That's the next one up. It's teed up. They're ready to hit it all, and they'll bring it because there is the, the 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 number of government programs that they have in mind 
uh, to save us from ourselves is endless. And so um, we have to bring people to caucus, get them involved in the process, get the types of candidates that Jake talked about. So if we want to have uh, a situation a year from now where we're looking at actually reducing the size of government from the, the now $38.3 billion, we were at 34.4, remember that was where the discussion was? It's at 38.3 now, folks. That's where the, the, the general fund budget is. So if we want to go, if we want to have a 38.3 or actually lower, maybe a 36 billion dollar budget, start to uh, reform government, um, we need to get to caucus. We need to bring our neighbors with us to caucus. Or it's going to be 40 or 42 if we don't. If we want to have more of the um, social agenda that's being brought forward by the Democrats, the gay marriage bill, we see them entering our schools with the same agenda with a bullying bill. Um, and all of the, the uh, machinations of government they're bringing with that $50 million unfunded mandate in that bill, by the way, to our local school districts. $50 million unfunded mandate. If you want that type of thing coming, then don't go to caucus. But if we want to make sure we go in a different direction and start to undo some of the things that the Democrats have done in exerting their, their uh, very liberal social agenda, we need to bring people to caucus. The energy mandate they brought, they brought a 1.5% solar mandate. So I guess you're in compliance, Jack. 1.5% solar mandate. That is going to result in what? Higher rates. By the way, I always oh, told that the, at the north one. Um, I was on the House floor with uh, Representative Ortman, who is uh, probably everybody's favorite legislator in here, right? Uh, Representative Hortman, excuse me. There's Hortman and Hortman. Hortman's a, a Republican. She's a good legislator. Representative Hortman, who is uh, one of the greenest members of the legislature. Now, um, in this group, I don't think that's a, a, you know something real flattering. But she was the architect and the author of the energy bill in the House. And so I remember on the House floor, and I don't know if Kathy remembers this or not, but I was uh, interviewing her on the House floor because... Um, there was a provision in her bill uh, that provided for solar gardens. <laughs> solar gardens. I didn't know what solar gardens were. So I, you know, Representative Hortman, tell us what solar gardens are. I've never seen this before. You know, I, uh, I born and raised on a farm and we, we ever drove the tractor all day and we, you know, I would even do a garden for my mom every year and, you know, and we would, I remember plowing that out too and, and we would pull weeds and pick pickles and, everything else and we had raised lots of things in our gardens um, so that we could eat every year and so Representative Hortman tell me what is it what is a solar garden well she didn't know she she didn't know how that language got in there got in there in the Senate well well Representative Hortman what are they raising solar gardens well like I told you Representative Draskowski I, I'm not sure I, I'm not familiar with this term it was thrown in in the Senate it shouldn't have been well Representative Hortman I can tell you what they raise in solar gardens Rates. They raise rates in solar gardens. <laughs> and so that was one of the memorable times that, that we had last year uh, that I remember. But um, we do have some fun with our colleagues. And, um, but that's the energy mandate. And they'll have another one. And they'll bring another one after that. Um, you know, uh, the minimum wage bill. They're going to come in and they're going to kill all kinds of jobs, especially for our young people. You young people back here? And, you know, $150,000 in federal debt, if you're a taxpayer, that's where it's at right now. You need to connect with your friends and neighbors and let them know what this government is doing to you on the trajectory we're on. And if we want to make change, you need to bring your young friends to these caucuses and get them involved. They may not have an interest in politics right now, but politics is having an interest in them. And it will continue to. A variety of things they brought. Remember, $90 million for, um, $90 million they tucked into the tax bill for a uh, new Senate office building, complete with a reflecting pool. You didn't hear about it? Neither did we. When, when the bill went on the floor, there wasn't any discussion on the floor. Of course, it was 377 pages dropped off two hours before we were to vote on it. Um, 
that's legal size, of course. And um, tucked in there and paid for, not paid for with the current budget money, $90 million, but paid for with lease purchase financing. So young people, you get to pay for that over the next 25 years. By the way, Representative Dean ran the numbers. I was talking to him a couple weeks ago. $90 million, I don't remember how many offices is there are in this thing or they're gonna plan for it. Um, but by the way, there's room for the Senate um, in the current, well, after they build the, or, or refurbish the Capitol, there's room in there then, and there's about half the Senate is in the state office building where Kathy and I are, are housed now, and our offices are fine. I mean, they do the trick. Um, but Representative Dean ran the numbers. Amortize, amortize at $90 million over 25 years, and he, he, he ran it off, you'll have to ask him. He ran it off a of house research to make sure his calculator was working right. And uh, each office is gonna cost $11,000 per month. $11,000 per month. And we're paying for it. So if we want more wasteful spending like that, don't go to caucuses. If you wanna make change in Minnesota government, and bring your government to start to be accountable to you instead of sending your neighbors out of this state to Florida because they can't stand the warehouse tax that's here and their particular industry revolves around that because the Democrats brought forward a warehouse tax that is the only one in the country. When these warehouses, and we interviewed them uh, with a, week, a week or two ago, are operating on margins of three to 5%, well, the sales tax is 6.875%. So how, th that doesn't wash out very well, does it? So if we wanna stop that type of behavior and bring a responsible legislature to Minnesota and change the direction, we've gotta get up off the couch, we gotta get out of our job for a moment, take our mind out of what we're doing, take our mind out of our fishing, by the way, they're not biting anyway, <laughs> and get to caucus and bring your neighbors with you, bring your friends, bring your relatives, bring like-minded people. And together, if we do that, we can make change and send Minnesota on a better course. Thank you. Thank you, Drez.